I'm here at Gabriella Plant Shop where we've started selling praying mantis that you can use as a biological control to protect your garden against pests. So they come in this container here and so they're not hatched yet. So what is actually in here that I'm gonna pull out is an uu theca that basically is an egg case. This is a Carolina mantis uu theca. Carolina mantis are the big green praying mantis that you are familiar with and usually think of when someone says praying mantis. So the uu theca is an egg case where there are a bunch of babies developing inside that the mom laid and when she laid it, she stuck it to a branch or twig. These have been, uh, you know, ethically produced and farmed from a source, not taken from the wild or anything like that. And they are produced by this company to be distributed to guys like you um, that come into shops so that you can use them to protect your garden against pests. It's pretty cool because praying mantis naturally in the wild eat anything, any insect, any mite, anything that's moving that they can get in their mouths basically. They need to eat a lot so that they can continue to grow until they would mature and then have to, you know, mate and go through that life cycle. So what we're going to do is we have a lot of praying mantis here at Shop to Sell. In case some hatch, I want to put together some terrariums for them to live in so that we can have a demonstration and you get to see up close in personal what these tiny really cute baby praying mantis look like um they're adorable so as soon as we get some to hatch uh once these are set up we'll come back and do another video and release them and put them in their new homes so what we're going to do today in preparation for an uu theca hatching here in shop is we're going to set up these terrariums i got a couple different terrariums one just to show you know the different varying sizes that you could keep them and they're all cute in their own way but as well one uu theca is going to have a lot of babies and so you don't want to have too many in the same space i would say unfortunate fact is carolina mantis are cannibalistic and so if you don't give them enough food and you have too many in a small enough space they will eat each other so be aware. Carolina mantis in the wild typically are an arboreal species, meaning that they live up in the trees. So the ground cover that I'm going to put in the terrariums doesn't have to be really intricate. It doesn't need any foliage or covering or anything like that. Uh, really what they want is a lot of sticks and a lot of places to walk and climb and explore up above. So I just have here uh, creature soil. Um, it looks to just be some cocoa core and maybe some sand. There's no perlite in it. Um, generally the rule is if you're making a uh, habitat that a creature is gonna live in, you don't wanna use a substrate that has perlite in it because if they are able or accidentally ingest perlite, usually it can block their digestive tract. Um, and so that's why you know most soils should not have perlite if you're gonna keep a creature in it. So I'm going to put just a thin layer on some of these. So as you can see, I only have one plant here. So if you know me, usually if I see an empty space, I'm gonna put a plant in it. But because these guys are young and growing and really care more about the branches and all of the intricate spaces that they need to walk and climb and explore, like I mentioned, because these enclosures are so small, it can be difficult to get an arboreal tree plant that also fits in something this size. And so realistically, most um, praying mantis habitats usually are just sticks. Uh, so that's what we're gonna do with the two smaller ones is they are going to be solely stick habitats, which they are totally cool with. Also, because these are small enclosures, there isn't, usually in larger size terrarium setups, there's a front access door, uh, but because of these size, this one specifically is only top loading. So it will be interesting designing something like this. And I do want to use, this is our ficus microcarpa ginseng that are so awesome. Like look at these roots, so thick. And I think this makes a super cute little miniature tree that when you put a little baby praying mantis on it, it's going to look like it's a huge tree. So I'm going to use this piece of 
piece of paper just as a guide so that when I pour in the soil we don't get it on the plant. stick work so really I'm just going to try to make this look as aesthetically pleasing and giving the baby praying mantids as much area to climb around and explore as they can so so there are a few species of praying mantis that are able to walk on smooth surfaces but I do not believe that Carolina mantids can cling to a smooth surface so I am concerned that if they were on the ground they wouldn't be able to get up here because of the pot so I do want to make sure that there are definitely enough connecting areas with the twigs that they can get up here if they need to. Also, I really, okay, I really like this branch <laughs> because you can see this lichen growing here. Actually, there's a few different species of lichen and a tiny moss. And so these like turquoise, almost aquamarine colored things that you see are actually a symbiotic relationship between a fungus and an algae. And so they live together actually within each other's tissues, interconnected and uh, they are some of the coolest things on the planet. I'm sorry, plants, but lichen are pretty cool. Um, and so, yeah, you can see the little one here, and then a moss, and then look at this guy, like, what? So, I definitely want to display this one, you know, up front somewhere. Super pretty. I did collect these branches from the ground, so they had already fallen off the tree. So that's why these are kind of brittle, is they've already started to break down. They're not live branches that I snipped off the tree. I should point out that I have built a lot of tanks in my life. I have way too many creatures at home um, in a bunch of different tanks, and so I am trying to describe to you guys and give you guys little tips or tricks of kind of how or why I decide to build my tanks. And so, because I am using sticks, sticks aren't the most sturdy things by themselves, so I'm cutting them to the size where I can tuck them under this lip, and so that they are just long enough that there is pressure that is basically keeping it taut, um, so that if I was to move this tank, it's not going to instantly fall over or lose its position. I'm like literally building a house on sticks. <laughs> this one is a challenge because it's so small and it's such a narrow opening. Very cute. I mean, look at all that space. All that room for activities. So good. And I mean, if you're only like two cent, no, one centimeter. Okay, one centimeter. This is one centimeter. If you're born that size, this is a huge freaking place to live. <laughs> um, so yeah, I'm happy. All right, this was the small tank. Ready for the medium tank reveal? I mean, it's, it's cool, but it's like... <laughs> I hope you're sitting down! Uh, boom. Because they are an arboreal species, usually they like more tall containers, but because they're young, this one's going to be fine, even though it's not taller than it is wider. Um, just like this, this will be fine. It should go without saying, but these are not their forever homes. Full grown female Carolina mantids can get anywhere from six to eight inches long. So 
<laughs> By the time it even tried to reach adulthood, it would basically be the size of this container. So, you know, these are just for display and growth of the babies and for education purposes here in shop, um, but we will then find other homes for them as they grow. It is viewable from all sides, but I would say this is the front because look at the lovely tag that you can still see through all of the sticks. And the little lichen in there, ah, oh, it's so good. I'm very happy with this. Last step is I'm going to spray the tanks in. Um, they don't need a really high humidity, but they still would appreciate moisture in the air. Uh, and the soil was really, really dry. So I'm going to spray them in, um, get them good and saturated, but not soaking. Also, there's no drainage in these types of tanks. So if you overwater, you're in trouble and you basically have to either wait for it to dry, which can take a really long time, or take it all out and start all over again. Um, so you definitely want to be careful when it comes to watering in a, a closed uh, environment. And with those sprays, we're going to close these up, tuck them away, and as soon as our babies hatch, you guys will be the first to know. If you're local and you want to come see Praying Mantis in person, or maybe bring some home, come check us out at shop. We also have ladybugs that you can bring home as another biological control for pests you may have in your garden. Um, so really excited, stay tuned. Praying Mantis.